What happens when a high school girl switches bodies with the middle-aged serial killer? A lot of clapping. So the film kicks off of Jenny, Evan, Isaac, and Sandra, a squad of teenagers who clearly haven't seen enough horror movies. They're chilling around a campfire. Jenny's house swapping ghost stories and roasting marshmallows. The story of Joyce, the legendary butcher, a serial killer with a serious case of the crazies who hasn't been caught yet. But don't worry, it's just a legend, right? Isaac playing it cool, decides to spook Sandra, causing her to spill her drink all over herself. Not cool, man. Sandra storms into the house for a wardrobe rescue with Isaac on her tail to say sorry once inside. Isaac gets distracted by Jenny's dad's antique art collection because he doesn't love dusty relics. He spots a unique dagger chilling in a crate and can't help but take a look. Meanwhile, Sandra's on a quest for some cleanup supplies when Isaac leaves the dagger on the counter and ventures into the basement. He discovers a stash of vintage wine and grabs a bottle, but is startled by a sudden noise and drops it classic horror movie mistake out of nowhere. The butcher appears and gives Isaac a lethal wide bottle necktie. Yikes, poor Sandra gets the bathroom ambush treatment in her school meets the toilet seat in a not-so-refreshing encounter. Evan and Jenny are blissfully unaware having a good time as if they're living in a rom-com, but not for long. Ginny walks away unimpressed by Evan's antics, and the butcher introduces Evan to his new best friend Antenna's ragged to the head ouch. Ginny now in full panic mode dashes into the mansion to play a high-stakes game of hide and seek. The butcher launches a spear in her direction, but he must have skipped his morning coffee because he misses Ginny sneaks into a closet and finds a secret door like she's a Narnia or something. She hears her parents return home and breathes a sigh of relief. Too soon, Jenny the butcher has other plans and gives her personal spear hug against the wall and to top it off, he swipes that ancient dagger on his way out rude fast forward to Millie, a girl just trying to enjoy breakfast with her mom and cop sister Charlene. Things have been tense since their dad passed away, but Millie's trying to keep it together. Charlene, not so much, she gets called into work and in a fit of passive aggressive pettiness, tosses their breakfast in the trash, uncovering an empty liquor bottle. Because family drama pairs well with breakfast, right? Charlene rolls her eyes as she catches her mom hitting the sauce again like she's auditioning for the next Real Housewives of Dysfunction. Later, Millie heads to school with her squad Nyla and Joshua, ready to face another day in teenage jungle at school. Millie's wardrobe becomes a target of a wannabe Regina George named Ryler. It's all Gucci though, because Millie's too busy crushing on poker. The human embodiment of hard eye emojis, later Millie rocks up late to her carpentry class, and Mr. Fletcher, the teacher who probably picked in high school, gives her a verbal smackdown, as if that's not enough when Millie can't give her presentation. He humiliates her in front of the whole class, earning him the worst teacher of the year. Warden Millie's book, suddenly everyone's phones buzz with an emergency alert like a bunch of caffeinated bees. Four students were brutally clapped last night, and there's a serial killer on the loose. But hey, it's homecoming, so the party must go on right. Millie goes all out in her school mascot gig, but some football jocks aside to taunt her, proving they have the IQ of a football later. Millie says her goodbyes and waits for her mom to pick her up. But surprise mom's out cold on the couch after one too many cocktails. Charlene gives her a wake up, but Millie's phone dies, leaving her stranded. Soon, Millie spawns a mass man across the street, and she's convinced he's the butcher classic horror movie move she hides under the bleachers. Millie thinks she's safe, but no, the killer pops up like an unwanted YouTube ad gotcha she tries to run, but he catches her faster than an iPhone battery drains. The butcher whips are an ancient dagger and its gem glows like a discount glow stick. He stabs him in his shoulder but gets wounded too. Like some twisted buy one, get one deal. Charlene shows up just in time to fire a warning shot and the confused butcher books it at the police station. Millie's Loki freaking out the ancient dagger Dola is now evidence and its magic is about to get wild that night. It lulls Millie to sleep and she wakes up transformed looking around. She touches her chest in confusion. Meanwhile, the butcher wakes up in an old mill, also acting rather weird. Dola's witchcraft has body swapped up Billy's now a six and a half foot serial killer, while the butcher is trapped in a teenage girl's body boy back at Millie's house. The butcher and Millie's body is struggling to blend in, but he's got one goal, kill the fam. He grabs a knife eyes on Charlene, but Millie's mom swoops. Do you want to see part two of this video? Subscribe to the channel and comment part two. Thanks for watching. I would see you at part two.